make it to the top of bodybuilding, I think you do need PDs. But <clears throat> with that said, I would love to be proven wrong. Um, I would love to pull up to the doctor's office with you one day, watch them draw off your blood, and send the results to my email. Oral jelly or a pill, they're two different forms. This morning I took the jelly, because obviously I'm training with Larry Wheels. I want to make sure the pump is juicy. But uh, yeah. if you want to try it. I do want to try it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All I can say is not natty. <laughs> That's all I can say, not natty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bye -bye. <laughs> PR lifestyle is more than just hitting a PR on the squat bench or deadlifts. A PR could be going a week without skipping a meal. It's about being the best version of yourself, always improving. versus you. What's good guys, here we are at an Airbnb, and by we, I mean me and Adam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for those who know him, if you see him, be ready for an arm wrestle. <laughs> so we're about to hit up Walmart before our collab with Joshua. Manoy. Joshua Monoy. Joshua Monoy. Yeah. Yeah, forgive me, Joshua. Uh, Adam just introduced me to this guy literally yesterday, and I was like, wow, he has some freaky arms. He's here based in LA, has a good following. Adam says he's a great guy. So we're going to make a clap happen. But before that, I'm going to grab a laptop over at Walmart, and we'll take it from there. So that's just in a couple short hours. We have this collab. I like to train bright and early. So we're filming the fit, which is the Boohoo Fit matching set. I'm a lazy uh, stylist, so I like matching sets. It's less effort up here. I can say, okay, shirt, bottom, matches, easy. It looks great, and if you use code wheels, it's 50% off. We're filming this side of the Airbnb because the other side behind Adam is filthy, and we don't <laughs> want to show you guys the dark side. So I got the Dirty Dior's gifted from my fiance. Look, guys, I was happy to wear Skechers and Korean shoes, right? But she wasn't happy with that. She's like, "Don't you dare taking me out in Skechers." So I'm like, all right, I have to compromise, right? Relationships are all about compromise. So if I gotta wear some designer shoes every now and then, so be it. But I could care less about keeping them clean. Anyways, let's hit up Walmart. Y'all see that? This is LA. I was expecting sunshine, warm weather. This is actually real winter. I've been spoiled in about the last four years. Uh, so I'm gonna take out Adam's glorious Honda CRV. Yeah. It's not like Dubai. We're spoiled out there. I had all kinds of cars out there. But now, yep. Now we're in the Honda CRV. Uh, but don't judge the book box cover. It's fully loaded. You got heated steering wheel, adaptive cruise, heated seats. So yeah, it's got everything I need. But there's one thing about it that I absolutely hate. I'm gonna take what that is right now. He lent, lent it to a friend, a uh, great guy, but he did kind of fuck up the car. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So normally there's a button here on the drive selector, right? But thanks to Jeff, there is not. So what that means, is you gotta stick your finger in and play with her a little bit. She'll usually give you a sign that she's liking it and then when she says like, yeah, you know, deeper, more, she'll let you put it into drive. We have to actually have to do like, get your finger in there, like push it down. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fucked. <laughs> All right, to Walmart. I haven't been to Walmart in literally years. Only 11 minutes away. Opens early. 
Oops, that's 7 a.m. They can be early birds like me. Okay, I'm gonna pull out, not get hit. Okay. And we're off. So I was up bright and early, like 3 a.m. because I'm jet lagged from the time zone difference being over in Dubai, the 12 hour time difference. Watch the road here, not crash and die. And I was up at 3 a.m. I'm like, I'm hungry. So got my shit on, went to IHOP, it's 24 hours, I wear a Santa Monica Boulevard, and the car machine is down. I'm thinking to myself, like, hmm, in this day and age, who carries cash? I don't. So I had to go over to Yum Yum Donuts, which so far is the best donuts I've had in a long time. If you like donuts and you go to Dunkin' Donuts, you don't like donuts. Those donuts are always hard. Never satisfying. A donut should melt in your mouth. Anyways, comment below if you actually carry cash. I haven't carried cash for me since I was a teenager. What are you eating? Don't film this, don't film this. <laughs> you know, I was expecting this place to be an absolute pigsty, like things over the floor, clothes off the rack, but it's clean, it's organized. There's like about 50 people working here at once right now. Mm -hmm. This is exceeding my expectations. Mm -hmm. It's not the one that I remember growing up with. I don't like that uh, LCD. So I'm spoiled with OLED screens. I have one as my computer monitor, a 48-inch C1 from LG. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, can't go back to LCD after my eyes have enjoyed OLED. This is not going to cut it. But that price is attractive. Two hundred dollars. You can't beat that. Thirty-two GB, four gigs of RAM memory. I mean, this is just straight up entertainment. Mm -hmm. Until my desktop that is way overpowered what I'm using it for gets shipped from Dubai to here. Um, considering it's just temporary, I might just get this. Yeah. Look at look how beautiful that scenery is. I love Dubai, but one pet peeve of mine is how flat it is. For me personally, didn't find Dubai too beautiful. The city, however, the skyline, very beautiful. Outside of that, a bit dull. Um, I grew up in a city, born and raised in New York City. Uh, it's an iron jungle, surrounded by concrete, not much green, so I was always craving living in a place like LA, where it's full of green trees, mountainous terrain. So seeing that kind of backdrop, <clears throat> just make me feel good. I love it. I think LA is underrated when it comes to how beautiful the city it is. Um, talking about outside the city, like downtown, Venice, Santa Monica, like when you get more outskirt LA, like more suburbia, and you get to see things like this, like where you drive, it's, love it. And I, I told Phil I would ask you because this is a, this is legitimately something I use to fuel the pump. It's called Cialis. Mm. Have you ever taken Cialis? Yeah, but not pre-workout. Okay, so you're <laughs> taking it for the other kind of workout. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Would you want to take it for this workout? Mm. Because you know what it does, right? It, I know it does my dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Viagra would do that specifically for stimulation there, but Cialis gives you stimulation for whatever muscle being worked. So today we're training arms. I'm taking it. Honestly, I take it like it stays in your system for like two to three days. So I'll take yeah. one uh, oral jelly or a pill. They're two different forms. This morning I took the jelly because obviously I'm training with Larry Wheels. I want to make sure the pump is juicy. But uh, yeah. if you want to try it. I do want to try it, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. With the pill or the gel? I want the pill. Which one is more potent though? I mean, I've had the pill in the past and it doesn't get the job done. Let's stick with what, you, what you're good okay, with. Okay, six. Is there like a two hour build up? Would it work this quickly? It'll be uh, like within 30 minutes. Okay. It'll hit your system. Sure. So there you go. Thank Snack you, sir. Let me grab uh... Dude, I'm, I'm putting everybody on. And I was put on by my coach, Dave. So, I'm really excited to see how it hits his system. <laughs> Cialis, boy. We're, we're good, on, hard off that Cialis. Come on, man. I saw that he ran, he ran up the, the leg session with the quad god, the natty quad god. Lex. Now he's running up arms with the natty tricep god. Let's see the, let's see the, uh, the arm. already pretty full. I had some sushi last night. <laughs> it's going to be a good pump. So, my fiance ain't here yet. Okay. What am I going to do post-workout? <laughs> what <laughs> what rather, who am I going to do? <laughs> like, what? <laughs>
Okay, here we are at Flex Gym in Woodland Hills with Joshua. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming out today, boss. Thank you. Are you thinking me? Yes, thank you. Of course. My, it's my area, man. I appreciate you coming over. Yeah, and so far the gym looks like pretty old school, a bit grungy. It's uh, actually preferred for me because in Dubai, a lot of the gyms are pretty manicured and like upscale. So this is like back to my roots. You can see the rusty dumbbells over there. Yes. It looks legit. I can't wait. I can't wait. Nothing but iron. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you even got some deadlift platforms back there. Wow. Yeah. It's nice. It's, you know, it's a pretty diverse gym, actually. They got everything in here. They catered to powerlifters as well. Yes. Can I, like, throw my belt, slam the weight, can I do all that shit here, too? I, I, yeah, actually, yes, because I've heard a lot of people screaming and, and just making all kinds of sounds and throwing shit around, so I bet you'd be able to pass. Oh, yeah. So, for those who don't know you, what are your achievements so far in Biden? Because you have, even though you're mostly covered up, he has an incredible physique. Thank all you. natural? Yes. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> not just my opinion. I don't think so. But, you know, prove me wrong, please. Okay. You know, I'd love to be proven wrong. <laughs> well, I've been training for 12 years. Okay. And I've done a total of five shows, four in NPC, which is untested. And uh, okay. the fifth one was Muscle Mania, which is the natural federation. The reason I did the four in NPC is because I wanted to achieve and attain my, my IFBB Pro card okay. as a natural, just to be able to say I did it, just okay. to be able to have that flex on everybody else. But ultimately, after the last show, my placing was decent. Uh, I'm never going to be the victim or like, be the sore loser. Like, I, I was happy with the package I brought, but I did want to see how I'd fare among my peers as a natural athlete. So I went to Muscle Mania. I ended up winning. I ended up attaining my pro card as a natural bodybuilder. And uh, yeah, I've just learned a lot over the years from different coaches, different training styles, absorbing knowledge, watching, studying. And I mean, it's brought me here. A lot of people look up to me for my physique and my work ethic, my intensity, my, my discipline. So. I think uh, I've built a solid foundation for myself in the sport of bodybuilding, and I only plan to go further, go the distance, because my goal is ultimately to become the best natural bodybuilder there is, and okay. I plan to do that. Oh, right, you set the ceiling, set the ceiling high. Yeah. Right? Fuck you, man. After, there is no ceiling. <laughs> even better. Yeah. After 12 years in bodybuilding, yes. you basically have a PhD in the sport. I, I claim that. Yeah. So I'm gonna follow your arm workout. Okay. Okay. I want arms like that. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to show my arms. You know, that's why I have this big sweater on. Like, Dude, no, you got. You. you got big biceps though. Yeah, that's all I got though. But you got the whole thing. You know. You we always want what we don't have, right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I look at him like I want those. I'm excited, dude. I even got, I even got two of these. Sick. Okay. Which is, we're going, we're going in on arms today. All right. All right. So what the plan is, we're gonna be super sitting between buys and tries because that ultimately for me gives me the best pump. Because you get the best of both worlds on each side of the arm. Also, he's he's high on Cialis. I'm high on Cialis. Yeah. So it's going to be a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling that, you know, that lightheadedness already. Yeah, I feel it in my head yeah, already. Yeah. The blood's going away to somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right now we're going to get on some overhead dumbbell extensions. I explained okay. to him. That's my bread and butter for tricep size. Overhead, okay. Going heavy as shit, as I'm sure you're a fan. Yeah. And oh, then yeah. some simple standing isolated bicep curls with the dumbbells. Those will be our starting movements. And then we'll... We'll progress from there. Beautiful. Let's hit it. Let's do it. Get to work. I'm gonna teach him the striking I'm tricep. Like <laughs> <laughs> the ways of the striking tricep. Push your hands. Snap on your limit. Full extension, locking them out. What's the plan here? Full extension, locking them out. I would say so for the uh, for the warm ups. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and fully extend. Okay. I'm just doing a set of around 15 to 20. Put some blood in there, and I'll do one more warm-up set. Then I'll start my work. Well, I'm in here in LA, dude. Might as well do it all. I moved to LA for music. Okay. I play guitar, I sing, and I write. Yeah, most talented. Okay. Fitness is obviously what I had in the bag, so I went with it. It started making me money. That's why I'm an influencer now, and I have my sponsors. But ultimately, music is a passion. I would love to be on the big screen. So. Likewise. Let's go for it. Oh yeah. I want to be on the big screen. He's acting. He's gonna represent me, man, behind the camera. Yeah. You gotta get him as the uh, the next fucking Black Adam. <laughs> you would kill that, you would kill that, man. I can see you in some of these. Let's you see. You have the recognizable face. Yeah, you know, I just need to work with acting code, see if there's any potential there. Also, see if I genuinely enjoy it. Right. If the passion ain't there, I'll never make it to the top. Yes. But if it is there, I'll do whatever it takes to get to the top. Mm -hmm. I'll play that same mentality. I deal with powerlifting, lifting, and it's acting. Yeah. I will make it there just go out and enjoy it. That'll be amazing. Yeah. We'll, we'll end up starting in a movie in the future. Oh yeah. Go we'll start. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the best. No, I'm right. really excited right. about that. Because dude, that's the thing. You, everyone sees it on social media, or at least they see what we do. Right. Like we lift heavy weight. Obviously you're 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 into fitness, you train hard, you're that guy. Yeah. I'm the bodybuilder, I train, I've been training for years. But they don't know 
what's on the surface. They don't know what we actually care about, where the heart lies. And so it's good to hear something outside of that. Like, if you were all about fitness, I would still fucking respect it. But just to hear that you have other endeavors and other things that really tug your heartstrings, that's, that's dope. I'm excited for you. If you end up taking that route, man, I hope you go the distance. Oh yeah, and I'm in the best position to do so as a you, as you said. As an influencer, we have the privilege to, you know, dedicate more time to pursuing what we really want to do yeah. outside of this, right? Right. Um, and I think pivoting off of what we're doing right now is like a great stepping stone. Yes. I'm getting in back into the studio this month. Okay. I'm working on a big acting project right now. I can't speak on because I signed an NDA, but I'm doing things. Oh yeah. I'm getting there. I'm finally doing what I want to do. Okay. Outside of just being in the gym fucking every day of the week. <laughs> this is the bread and butter though, right? It's the bread and butter. This is the bread and This butter. is already in the bloodstream. This ain't going nowhere. Exactly. This this don't, going we don't nowhere. have to remind ourselves to come in. It's already going to happen. And then whatever we, whatever else we do, that's the to-do list. This is just in the blood. I'm waking up. I'm going to the gym. All right, now what am I doing today? That's how it goes. Y'all will get there. Once you get to that point, then you're fucking set. Then the discipline's already in brain. You don't got to worry about nothing. You're going to hit your goals regardless, no matter what. Go. You did a workout before we started filming because you're already pumped. <laughs> he was pumped before the workout dude, started. I, I really I did come in here already full, dude. It's, it was the sushi. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of sushi, what are y'all doing after this? Sushi. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> good. Yes. I'm under eating right now. You're under eating? I'm definitely under eating, 100%. Since I dropped the TRT, I haven't had that same drive to push it with calories. Also, it was part of an experiment to see, okay, what can I do that's very sustainable. What, what will I look like? How much will I live? Sustainable being okay, healthy, TRT. Food, eat, eat, eating when I'm hungry, not, not forced to eat. Right? Because that's not sustainable either. I'm not going to be doing that 10 years from now. Yeah, so now that I've established that, okay, I know I'm not TRT, I know I'm not eating when I'm hungry, which is like under 2,000 calories a day. But my, my appetite generally isn't. Under yeah. two a day? Under 2,000. Yeah, breakfast the last five months would be about 5% calories, and then each meal would be roughly the same. And I'd be full, I'd be content. Mm. So the which biggest is, challenge for me, yeah, the biggest challenge for me with my fitness and getting out goals was always eating enough. Mm -hmm. That was by far the biggest challenge. I would always have a small appetite, always under eat. Yeah, so now that I know, okay, now I've established what's uh, sustainable. Now what can I do if I pour through a little bit, get some more calories in, how I look, how uh, my strength responds. So how much calories are you on? All right, Larry, I, I don't count calories, nor do I count macros. I have never, outside of a bodybuilding show prep, where my coaches would tell me what macros, what calories to hit, okay. outside of that, I've never counted. Because like you, when I was younger, I was slimmer, I was skinnier. And the reason for that is, I would be so picky with what I ate. I barely ate. So once I got into fitness and I realized that, hey, I want to get bigger, I'm going to have to eat. I stopped being a bitch. I stopped being picky. And I just continued to eat as much as I could. Obviously, later in my years now, where I'm, I know what kind of healthier foods I need to be putting into my system for nutrition, it's ultimately eating lean by default. Okay. Just because literally, so I'm so basic. My food choices are boring. They're so chicken, rice, and everything nice. Like, that's the way it goes. So I know that I need to at least be eating four to five meals a day. Gotcha. So typically that's where I am as far as if I'm hungry, I'll eat my meals. Usually that's four times a day. But seeing as though I want to lean bulk, I try to push that five. If I have enough time in the day, I'll push that six. Right. There'll never be anything where I'm like, like already still full and trying to get the next meal. I'm not going to do myself like that. Probably. That doesn't feel good. That's not how we want to live right. outside of a bodybuilding prep or things of that nature. So. I wish I could tell you that I have a calorie count. Hey, be honest. If, if, I, had to, if I had to, then I'd say like, like 35. Oh, wow. Maybe okay. 35. You would double what I'm on right now. Man, that's insane. You're that yeah. big. Eating under two. I'm not kidding. The last five months, I'm just a thousand calories a day. And that's all apparently that I need to maintain where I'm at right now, which is 250. If I were to bump it to three, I'd be 260, I'm sure. Like what are we working with here? 75 already? Okay. So usually I start my working sets at 100. Huh, really? I'm being dead ass. Okay. <laughs> my triceps have some strength, Larry. And some size, too. Yeah. They ain't too shabby. <laughs> Is 
This is our second warm up set with these dumbbells. Then I'll release the beast. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's all I can say is not natty. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not buying it. I think next work I'm bringing a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Simultaneously both arms? Yes. to the right. Oh my god. Yo, I've never seen biceps like that in person. I mean, dead but from serious. From the other side, I mean, dead it depends serious. what I'm wearing. Like, you can't tell it's torn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I lift it up. Boom. Okay. Damn. Well, it could be worse. I mean, oh, man. Wow. Like, I, I want them to be tall as shit. But it's thick. You got the yeah. balance, though. The thickness is definitely nice thick. Too. Yeah. Oh. You got the nice tricep pads making it all rounded off. Here's what I want to ask you. Do I want to? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bicep in his face? <laughs> yes. What's up? So, <clears throat> when did you know that you have potential in bodybuilding? Was there ever a point in time that you did know? Did you just get into it because, what you tell me? What was the reason you got into it? And did you know you have potential in bodybuilding? Hmm. So this, this goes back to 2016, when I was about to join the Marine Corps. And for the, I had been lifting already for years. I had just graduated high school. It was under a year after I had graduated high school. I was still training, I was still reg, working a regular job, and I was still living the gym life like all day, every day. I was in there. Everyone was telling me, because I had developed quite a good looking physique at that time, and everybody was like, you should go on stage, blah, blah, blah. You know? Everyone telling you this and that. Ultimately, I was like, at the time, I was like, dude, I don't want to go up there in a, in a fucking jock, in a, in a man's strap, in front of a whole bunch of people I don't even know and pose just to, make, just to get their attention, for them to tell me if I am or not good enough. So that wasn't my thing initially. Then I decided to join the Marine Corps. I was 19 at the time. I was 19. I knew that in boot camp, which was going to be from December to March, I would turn 20 which would mean I could no longer compete in a junior division if I ever were to compete. So, for my show, I listened to uh, somebody who ended up reaching me and they were like, you should do it, man, you're about to be 20. Might as well, because you're gonna lose weight in boot camp, all that running, all the, the slaying they're gonna have you guys doing. So I was like, fuck it. When did my first show? I won at 19. I won my show, thankfully. And from there, I was like, okay. And it really didn't hit me yet. It wasn't like anything like, okay, I need to go the distance. I need to actually take this seriously. I want to make it a career. It wasn't like that. But after that first show, my trainers at the time advised me to do another one a month later. Still, this was before boot camp, so I went and did it. They were like, you're already there condition-wise. Just run into the next show. You could probably win it too. I was like, okay. I'm about to go to boot camp. Fuck it. So I went and did the second show. I placed second, which gave me a national qualification. After that show, that was when it hit me. I was like, okay, I'm still not even 20 years old. I just did my first and second show, hella, hella back to back. And the first show was a week out. I decided to do the show that I won. I did that show a week out. With my off season conditioning, I was able to win that show. So that's when I was like, okay, I'm already into fitness. I just did these shows. Ultimately, this could be good exposure, good money, possibly. I could become better in my physique, in my training, my, my discipline. So that's when I was like, hey, I'm actually gonna do this. I feel like doing another show. I wanna see how far I can take it. That's when I decided. Um, and then I ended up going to boot camp, which put a hold on everything because the training was like eight months. And then moved to LA, which really made me take a step back because I had to gather myself, get all my finances together, jobs, everything, living situation. 
and I finally came back to it for my, my shows last year, which were my third and fourth. Did all right, and I just did my WrestleMania show like two months ago and became a pro. It right. took some time. It was over the course of six years. Yeah, six years. I became a pro. And there was a lot that happened in between then. But ultimately, I love bodybuilding now. I definitely consider myself a, a bodybuilder, a competitor. And uh, I'm in the natural realm as a natural athlete, and I wanted to stay that way. So I'm just going to see how far I can push it. What about you? Uh, well, for me, that's why I was 14 to do the building. Uh, and I got into putting my physique, like the work on my self esteem. Um, but that didn't happen until I was like 21 I felt comfortable in my own skin. So all those years leading up to that, I just did it like fighting for that. Okay, I just want to feel comfortable in my own body. Um, I want to build myself esteem and my confidence. Uh, but throughout that process, I discovered that more than bodybuilding, I actually really love strength training. Um, so if I had to choose one or the other, it would always be strength training. Any form of strength training. I love performing, uh, performing feats of strength. Why is that? It's more satisfying when I hit the yard. It's more satisfying for me getting stronger than it is for me changing my body. Okay. Okay. These really get the meat, man. I really do feel it. Right up in there. It's gonna get fat. For me, it's hard to feel that connection. My triceps. But when I do this, I do feel it. Lean, man. What's your body fat right now? Probably not single digit. Probably like hovering a little over 10, 11. I've definitely been leaner than this. Uh, I'm not dieting right now at all. But as of Monday, I'm gonna be on a proper diet. Okay. Trying to get picked thin like you. And honestly, Judging, it overrated? <laughs> no, it's definitely not overrated. There's nothing like being shredded. Yeah. Sorry for the people who aren't. <laughs> no, that was like a, that was a low blow, but he asked the question, I answered it. I haven't felt the pump like this since I've been on cycle. This pump is comparable to being on a cocktail of BDs. You already have a pump? Yeah. I haven't been this pumped since the last time I was on full blast on full cycle. How long ago? No, that was six months ago? Six months ago? It's a Cialis, dude. See that? Oh, 100%. Cialis, bro. Like, I mean, if I you mean, can give you wood serious. like this, it yeah. can give you, I guess, a good pump, too. Shit, Clearly. It. Clearly. I'm Jeez. definitely not ED right now. <laughs> no. Do not. No. Honestly, I got a nice pump, too. Yeah. This is, that was only the fucking first working set. Yeah, that was my We still got at least three more. Yeah. <laughs> my idea of a good time. That last set was easier than the 100s. I think it's because I got the blood in the tricep, so it's giving me like a spring action coming up from the bottom. The set was easier. Yeah, look, we'll see if you can say the arm. same. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I haven't hit arms in six months. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. I'm literally having arms in six months. <laughs> so, I want to ask this you. This is a special moment then. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really want bigger arms too, so. Let's work on that shit. Thank you. 
didn't train them. <laughs> what would they look like if I didn't train them? Yeah, just curious. It's like, I haven't trained mine in six months. Okay. So I'm curious what yours would look like if you did the same thing. <laughs> in six months? Just say six months? Half a year. Yeah. You didn't train them at all. Just everything but your arms. I think they would still, because my arms cold are 18.5. With a pump they're doing. So if I were wait, to wait. not. We go up an inch and a half pumps? Yes. We did a video on my YouTube. <laughs> yes. What? Yeah, against Devin Bernardo actually. The other, yeah. the other king of arms. Yeah. And his, his increased half an inch. Mine grew an inch and a half. <laughs> when I get a pump, dude, well, I don't know what it is, but just like the blood gets close to the muscle and expands the skin, expands the muscle. Mm. Really hard for like my body, for whatever reason. But if I were to not train arms for a half a year, I'd probably lose like an inch, an inch and a half. Because it, it's going to be getting worked through everything else. Back, right. chest, shoulders. Exactly. I'll still get some triceps, some, some, some bicep action. Um, and obviously, if I'm not training arms, I'll, I'll adapt other movements that I don't do often, like gets or like other things. So I'm sure I'd be getting like forearm development. Everything else will probably become even more proportionate, to be honest. With my forearms compared to my upper arms, yeah, they, they need some work. You need some arm wrestling. That's the opposite of Popeye. Yeah, I need some arm wrestling. <laughs> yeah, on these. Yeah. <laughs> See, I got all this, man. I need some of this. You don't really need that though, do you for bodybuilding? Do they care much about forms? They care about proportion. Yeah. So if I don't have that, especially in a pose like a victory pose, you know what you know what that looks like? No. So it's like this. Okay. Which is a Sergio Olivia pose. And his forearms were fat enough to where he could pull that off and it looked insane. But I all I got is just boom, see? Like my forearms, you can't even see them flex really. But if I had them, I think I, would, I definitely wouldn't have as big of arms as I have. But you, your fucking arms stayed like the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't think they got any smaller. Uh, but they do get slightly bigger when I train them weekly. So I want to end focus on my physique as I am right now, as of today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they will grow about half an inch. What are your weak points that you're focusing on right now for physique? For physique, definitely hamstring, quad sweep, uh, with like a more snatched waist. Uh, and definitely more tricep development to make it a bit more proportion. And I always take calves. One day I'll <laughs> actually take calf training seriously. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. I like it. It's good to know your weak points. I know mine are definitely yeah. Definitely. I want a tighter waist. You know? People say I have a tight waist, but I, in my opinion, it could be tighter. But what else? What else do I need? I need some calves too. Definitely. Maybe they'll, they'll help me get a bigger squat. You can teach me some things, man. <laughs> I got you, and I'll tell you now, you don't need calf for a big squat. <laughs> I'll know, tell you bro. that, that's a fact. You don't need calf for a big squat. Visual, it that does. it does. It helps keep the trolls at bay. Mm -hmm. The trolls at bay? Yeah, keep the trolls Dude, at no, bay. Dude, no, the trolls will never stop, man. Can't live with them, One can't live without them. One thing about <laughs> in the past, I would never do overhead tricep extension. Uh, if I did do it, it would just be once in a very blue moon. It would be consistently. Mm -hmm. Definitely start. Like, whenever I hit tries, I start. But, but then, then again, like maybe this is what I've been missing because yes. I've always done like rope, mm -hmm. everything but that, yes. and I've never seen any change in my tricep development. 
probably sharpened them quite a bit when I polished the muscle. But it's more like like packing on the mate. Like that one will obviously get it. Um, and obviously going heavy because that's I never do that without going heavy. If I am to go lighter, it would just be on a burnout after my heavy set. That one I can definitely say is giving me the most meat because that's what like gets up here. These, this overshadows my fucking rear delt, and I need to develop my rear delt more. Mm -hmm. But all this right here? Yeah, I see that. Let's do yeah. it. <clears throat> see it. down on one knee for that one. I see that shit. She was playing hard to get. Let's see how she is with me. Let's go. Let's go. There you go. Nice. That explosive energy is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> what a difference. I'm, I mean, I'm, in, I'm an explosive lifter, so when I lift slow and controlled on their tempo, I'm like 50% weaker. Yeah. 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 When I get to turn that explosive energy, yeah. I feel so much stronger. It's a good like training style, man. Even, yeah. even for me, it's, it's tough going slow with that. I hit the bottom and I just, like, you got the fast muscle twitch fibers that just kick in. Because if I'm trying to go, like, all the way, like, slow on the negative, like you saw, and if I try to push that back up, I'm gonna cut five reps out of that set for sure, at least. set to increase which means 130s and for, eh, I'll pull I'll pull the 70s I'll pull the 70 70s for Adam there. Yeah. alternating alternating yeah alternating. and then I'll have a fucking set of 40s under me for that drop set <laughs> damn I ain't no bitch come on There you go. Ah. 
Nice. That was 17. Yeah, 17. Yeah. Just not the Damn. Damn. You can't let a little bodybuilder beat him up. Come on, <laughs> know, bro. Come on. You said you're 250? Yeah. Oh, now you're going to say I'm how much good, you weigh? I'm a yeah. good 70 pounds uh, less. Yeah. Are you actually? Yeah, I'm 188. Seriously? Uh, 60 pounds less. Yeah. Jesus. I thought you were at least like 210. Dude, I, I wish. I want to get to like a solid 200. It's just an eating game, man. Yeah. It's tough. That's where that stuffing yourself and forcing yourself comes in. Yeah. It's not pleasant. That's the mental battle. Eating when you're just absolutely sick of it. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. Oh, for sure. That's, that's where the mind has to be. Like, this This is the fun games. Like, yes. This is easy. This is dessert. <laughs> this is dessert. <laughs> By far the easiest part of bodybuilding training. Bodybuilding career. Yeah. The training. You looked really good on stage, man. Thanks. Like, you have a lot of good symmetry. And obviously, you have the... Uh, the solid, like stout posing for the mandatories. I don't. I didn't get to see your routine if you had one. I want to drop to classic division. You Just don't want to? I would. Oh. If I had to get back on stage, I'd want to give myself an entire year, of not worrying about my squat, bench, deadlift, because that's always been something that's holding me back from building a great physique. Because I've been so focused on staying strong. Mm -hmm and keeping that as a priority about bodybuilding. Yes. So my physique always suffered. But if I were to sacrifice that just for a year and go full force in bodybuilding, mm. I'm very curious what I'd end up looking like. Yeah, we'd see a new Larry for sure. Yeah, that for sure. Is. I've never done that because from day one of my training, it's all about just getting stronger. And look at any powerlifter. None of them look like bodybuilders. Yes. It's because we train. Yes. Even the ones that are naturally gifted, like with good symmetry, good insertions, mm -hmm. still they have those, we have these blocky waist, waist yeah. really thick back. Yeah, you know, just not very round muscles. I think it's a good foundation, to be honest, mm -hmm. to at least start on that and then make your way over. Because, dude, fun fact about me, I in high school, my high school I had a weightlifting class, mm -hmm. so I was introduced to fitness through powerlifting. Yeah. So for me, it was all about the numbers too. Because I was in the class we were doing clean and jerks, we were doing deadlifts, we were doing bench press for the numbers. Okay. We had our, our weekly meets. I was trying to get stronger with my max. And from there, I graduated. I didn't have the team anymore. So I moved on to just training for bodybuilding purposes because that's all I could do. Right. The gyms didn't have like the bumper plates or the platform. So I was like, fuck it. Dude. I got to continue some way, somehow. And then later down the line, I got into bodybuilding. So I think it's a great foundation. I started off for the numbers. Yeah. And you already had the strength. So at least it's just a matter of slowing down, bro. As you and said, it took you <laughs> six years. Yeah. Well, to get your pro card. Okay. Because I had the military. Right. Fair enough. So that really put a like put a hold on it. If I would have been straight up, like solid, it probably would have taken me like three. Like confidently, Still. I could say three. Yeah. Start. The most I give myself for a bodybuilding prep is a year. Not even. <laughs> About three, four months. Three, four months? Then I get right back into powerlifting. Ah. And during that bodybuilding prep, I was still worried about that. I gotta get this bench up. Gotta get this deadlift up. Yeah. It's hard to break. Man. Yeah. That's all you know. It's hard to just let that go because that's my one true love. But it's gonna come. That day's gonna come. One well, okay. We more bodybuilding, one year. We should train more. For sure. Definitely. If you're gonna be out here in Woodland Hills, I would love to train with you more, teach you a little bit. Absolutely, Up yeah. Up to you, man. If, ultimately, I'm always down to train. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody that I'm always down. And if there's advice I can shed, I'll fucking shed. It's like, I'm sure you could pick my brain, I can pick yours. I pick the fuck out of yours, dude. Of course, You're asking all the questions. I have a shit ton of questions. I'm just like, when I'm, when I'm <laughs> hitting the weights, that's like where my mind is, dude. Of course, yeah. Speaking of weights, we got one more set. Yeah, ultimate dumbbell curl, 70s, right? 70s. Let's get it. Dude, when you study any pose, anything, looks good. <laughs> All right, let's run it. Let's run it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's the most I'm gonna get. <laughs> Performance yeah, raggedy. Yeah. Yeah, Let me grab the forties. Awesome. Good shit. Bicep girl, y'all looking thick and pumped. That's y'all, I swear. <laughs> Bicep's got a heart on. Right. <laughs> yes. And they pumped. Come on. 
<laughs> I got you a pair of 40s. What are we doing? Let's get this burnout next side by side. Cool, cool. I'm gonna aim for 15. Okay, perfect. Uh, right. You want to do them together or is it one by one? Let's do them together. Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm good. <laughs> The 70s out though. Yeah. How many reps, man? I know you weren't counting. I wasn't. He <laughs> said the right still got a few. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. See, because of the, the chair, my bicep strength here is like 5% weaker. Okay. Yeah, it definitely does the job. <laughs> oh yeah, the Cialis? I have an oh, on-site pump, pump, I swear. <laughs> I love it. That was my only complaint, being yeah, on TRT. Huh? No, not even close. But I have a solution now. Yes, don't worry, I'll slide you a pack. Thanks. I yeah. got you, I'll be your my Cialis I'll pump. be your Cialis Oh yeah. <laughs> Exercise here, tricep push downs with the stack. Because we're already warmed up, we've been training heavy. Already got the blood in there, we're going on the stack. First set, easy. 20 reps. How many did you get? Over 20, probably. Yeah. Dude. So I was like, hey man, these little weight, those little weight clips that we try to put on it aren't gonna work. They won't fit. So our only option if we're gonna progressive overload is to increase the reps. I asked him if he's down, he said, Yeah, let's get a set of 50. A set of 50 with the stack. He said that'll get you pumped. I ain't no bitch. <laughs> 50 reps. 50 reps with the stack. From my good friend Larry. 50 reps. Not to go in the water. Come on. One. One. Two. Yeah. 
Let's go. Come on, you got this. Four. Crank them out. Just keep going. Yep. Keep going. Yep. 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 Yeah. Shut up. God. Let's make it 100, Holy right? Holy hell. Get in there real quick. shot. Looking at it in the mirror. Yeah, man. God damn. Teach me your ways, bro. Dude, you without a shirt is insane. How do I do you? <laughs> you just got, bro, you know what? If I can give you one tip is to have a lean. See? Have some kind of lean. See, even when you do that, you look more classic. I swear to God. Oh, wow. So squeeze the glutes. Squeeze the glutes. Suck in those obliques. Makes the waist look smaller. Right. And you just freaking... And you just be graceful with it. I'm gonna tip for the side chest. A, a tip for the side chest. Let me see. Okay, I gotta go this side. This I one. gotta see where it is. Five to the spots. Okay. Dude, it actually looks really good. Tuck this a little bit more. You don't want to have holes in okay. the pose. Because oh, when you show holes, that means there's space that's left unfilled. Okay. That's where more muscle could be. So never show holes. Nice and tight here. Push up right on that. Yeah. Squeeze the pep. This is a good line up here. Mm -hmm. You're showing your obliques. That looks good. You got a good nice tilt. Here. Yeah. And you're standing upright, which is more classic. I, I'm sure you've seen when people like, they call it sitting on it. Here. That doesn't look good to me. There are different, different ways to hit. Arnold would be like that. He would be up here. He would hit a vacuum. He'd push his chest up. Because mm. his was so high, he would sit up here. I got you. That's the way I like to do it. So I'll be. And I'll do my best to push up on my chest. My right pec isn't as big as my left, but mm -hmm. this arm is better to show off. So I'll be like this. I think yours looks pretty solid. You are more like a not up here. Yeah. But that gives you more ability to push in on the chest. Mm. So it still looks good. See, I never hit my side chest like this, but I actually like it. Ooh. <laughs> I'm learning from Larry right now. <laughs> that's Damn. all me. That's all me. Holy. I'm just sitting here relaxed. I like the way my physique looks, but yes. I want to work my most muscular. Okay. Because my most muscular, I think, oh, 
this area looks thick. Yes. But my arms get overshadowed. So okay. my arms really look a bit small and most muscular. Mm. Maybe I gotta turn it more out or I don't know. You know what I'll do? Sometimes when I hit a most muscular, I'll cross over. I'll cross over my hands. Because when you do it like this and you have your, your knuckle to knuckle, yeah. it's easier for your forearms to overshadow the bicep. Because mm. it'll be like this. Yeah. As opposed to if you're like this, you can get a lower kind of like look in. So you can throw your, your traps up, your front delts, buys, tries, mm -hmm. forearms, and you can hit it like that. Right. So you're doing it like this. Yeah. Which is still good, but you see what I mean? Mm. It yeah. kind of goes over my bicep. If it's right here, you can see everything. You're getting the arm, like so, are you getting that arm bit forward? Yes. So the tricep? Kind of like throwing out. Okay. That way you can create like a wall with your upper torso. So look, so I'm like crossing over? Yeah, you can do it like that. Jesus. Oh, that shit. So about out, right? Yes. Right here. Yeah, it seems a little bit awkward. A little bit better though. A little, I'd say as far as like the, the upper wall up here. Yeah. Let's go. Do your regular. Regular would be more like something like here. This is the way you just told me, which looks a bit more full. Yeah. Because you close those holes up. Yeah. A bit more full. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think that looks fucking gnarly. Good posing coach right here. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Jesus. Oh, yeah. Damn, yeah, I like the side chest you got, dude, honestly. Mm. Ooh! That's, yeah. That's legit. What do you guys think? <laughs> That's legit. Comment below, guys. What do you think? Yay or nay? That's mine. Okay. This is Larry's. Much more. Mm. It's a subtle chain. Subtle. It definitely helps me show my pet more. Mm -hmm. And it's a side chest, so that would be obviously the better route. Mm -hmm. anyway, preference. Everyone has their own unique style. That's what I like about classic. Right. It's not a guideline that you have to stick to by body. Nice. Ready, go. Ready, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Cow, man. Now I'm tapping on that one. I'm starting to feel like a little tight in the elbow area. I mean, it got you in the power department, but you got me like, you look, you look a bit, damn bit well better than you doing it. <laughs> Teach me something, Larry. <laughs> sure. Teach me something. Hold it, and then just go when you guys are ready. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, keep that pronation locked. Keep that pronation locked. Yeah. <laughs> You're strong though. Thank you. He, he gave me some good tips. The thing is, yeah. If you if you kept me over on your side of the table, yeah, it would have been around. I'm in trouble. Yeah, I'm in trouble. I can feel it. What did you do mid midway? You were okay, like, yeah, so. you like readjusted something. Uh, yeah. Okay. So go ahead. Yeah. So you're like this. Now see how I'm underneath. Yes. I'm in trouble right now. Okay. So if you knew what you were doing, you'd be able to take me right away. But I was able to uh, pull onto I your see. hand. Yeah, so right here. Yeah, good, go. Or I'm just so strong. You're like nothing. <coughs> you bastard, you bastard. <laughs> Holy. <coughs> nice. It's like right in the ego, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. right in the ego. Yeah. Man, does he look good arm wrestling or what? Holy. Hey, that dude. was amazing. <laughs> amazing. Thank you, dude. Every time. Jeez. All right, so the workout's done. We just ran through arms. 
buys and tries, solid session. Now, oh, yeah. it's time to sit down and talk business. Sure. We're gonna talk one-to-one, -one, man to man, because you're open with your following as well as I. Right. And the fact of the matter is, I am 100% natural, mm -hmm. and you're open with your audience as to the PDDs that you've used in the past. You let me know that you're off currently? I wouldn't say off, I'm on TRT at 175 a week. Okay. My testosterone levels came back at 1300. My original plan was to get it between 700 and 1000 because that's what I thought would mean good health. But right now, where my levels are at, I am in good health. So the intention was to pick a number mm -hmm. of TRT where I can keep it at that level indefinitely without any compromise to my health. Right. And so 1300 is that? Exactly. So reducing it wouldn't <clears throat> be necessary. Now, if my numbers came back like in the red, okay, this is bad, this is wrong, this is too high, then okay, let me lower it. Okay, that's not sustainable. I'm at the longevity now, <laughs> and everything came back in the green, I'm all good to go. So I'm keeping where it's at. I'm glad you found that spot. Yeah. I know it's, uh, obviously I don't know all the risks, but I know there are risks. Mm -hmm. And to have gone through all the training that you've been through, and obviously hitting the numbers you've been, and to come off that, which was a huge, like a respectful move, because I know that's, that's where your heart is training heavy and all that. I know obviously you're not going to be able to continue training that heavy Absolutely. if you're at this level now. But like you said, longevity is key. Mm -hmm. And that's what I promote on my YouTube, on my social media. So I'm glad you're, you're honest about that. Thank you. Um, the question is, man, I kind of already heard from Adam. <laughs> Am I natty or not? What do you think, Larry? I think no. You think not? I think no. I think <clears throat> I've been in the game a long time. And I've seen a lot of physiques that were abusing steroids, and I've seen uh, some that maybe weren't, uh, for example, Michael Hearn. Uh, and there is a big, there's a great area with natty or not. People claim natty, that may really be natty. And then <clears throat> the other side was really open about it with me, right? So I don't know for certain, right? Because I don't know what your bloods look like. I weren't there the last time you had your bloods done. Mm -hmm. I can only just look at you and make an assumption that, okay, from all the physiques I've seen in the industry, you having quite literally one of the best, and knowing that the best generally are enhanced, because to get it to the very top of bodybuilding, you do need PDs. If you want to make it to the top of bodybuilding, I think you do need PDs. But <clears throat> with that said, I would love to be proven wrong. Um, I would love to pull up to the doc's office with you one day, watch them draw out your blood, and send the results to my email. <laughs> Seriously, Ooh. I would love to do that, you know, because I want, I want to be proven wrong, okay. right? Because I've been under the impression this whole time that to look as you do, as I do now, mm -hmm. some level of PD use is required, right? If you want to make it to the top of bodybuilding, powerlifting, strongman, shit, even arm wrestling, it's, you're not going to get the right PD use. But I want to be proven wrong, you know? I want to believe that you can get this just with good diet, good training. And good, really good genetics. <laughs> really good genetics. Yeah. Damn, that was super thorough explanation. And obviously coming from someone who's who's been there at that level, like a PD usage, and you said you've been in the game for a while, which you have. I haven't gotten an explanation like that. Because you really diagnose like it looking like this. Obviously the genetics come into play, but as, as far as being a bodybuilder like I am, and eventually wanting to reach the top like I do, I, I agree with you in, in a sense of. If you want to get that far, at least in Olympia specifically, because ain't nobody on the Olympia stage is natural. Definitely not. Hardly anyone, I don't even know the percentage, but hardly anyone who's an IPB pro is natural. And like I said, initially that was my goal to get there as a natural, just to be able to say I did it. But I knew that if I wanted to, if I wanted to stay natural, it would take way more years than I had already put in, which was like, okay, I'm already mid 20s, so I don't know how much I'm trying to push it. But ultimately, I know the risks. For, for my lifestyle, what I want to do, it's not going to get me where I want to be. Uh, as far as what my heart is in, in acting and music and things like that. So I'm cool with the way I am, man. I like, I like my, my conditioning, my physique. It, I'm functional. I, I want to be able to look good. Um, and not even necessarily while posing. The goal for me is always to be aesthetic as fuck while being relaxed. If, if you're aesthetic without posing, that's the goal. That's, the that's where you got to be. I witnessed that today. Everything this guy did. Drinking his rain and his dream, <laughs> sitting looking at his phone, everything was aesthetic. <laughs> Talking to the camera now, I'm trying to like pitch my chest up and get the right angle for my jawline to look sharp, and you just do anything, you look aesthetic. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I definitely have thought about it. I mean, I told Phil, Phil knows firsthand that I've thought about it because on my second to last prep, I literally had the choice to 
because it was coming closer to showtime. Mm -hmm. And we all know that when it comes close to the showtime, you're supposed to be dick skin shredded, which as a natural, if you're doing it the, nat the natty route, you're not gonna get that super sucked in grainy, like seeing the little microfibers in your muscle look that these guys can be these guys. The glutes so, variations. Exactly, and, and at that time it was a national show, which was the USA's, very prestigious, and I wanted the fucking pro card, so I had the option to take uh, like a diuretic, an, and steroid, like a steroid diuretic, and I thought about it very hard, because obviously it was, the goal was to get the pro card, and I, I spoke to Phil, because he knows my morals and my moral principles, and I was like, dude, Phil, you think I should do this? He's like, bro, you've come so far as a natty. That's literally a whole thing. You were known as the natty or not guy. And everyone hates you for it, but they also love you for it. And it So I was like, all right. Sticking to your fucking gut and your balls is tough dude, in this industry. When you know that you could be strong as hell like you, or you could look crazy like Bumstead. Right. The people in the face of the, the industry, I guess, are the lead, the lead uh, incentives for me to think about it. But uh, that's, this is where it comes into play as you need to know what you want. You need to trust the process and have faith in yourself. So that's, that's why I like, that's what I preach over here. I know I respect him way, way more so that he's honest with his people. Just like Joe Andrews. Joe's open about it. He's with Transcend, which is like healthily prescribed PEDs to keep him level, just like you baseline. By the way, link down below. See if you qualify for TRT. I'm with Transcend as well. Good shit, man. Good shit. I love that. <laughs> I think, I think we covered the natty or not, man. He doesn't think I'm natty, but he did suggest the, the possibility and opportunity to actually go to the blood, the blood store or uh, obviously order it online like I did before because I'm taking the test. Okay. I took Derek for more plates, more dates, the specific test he told me to take, just like Lex Little. I took that. Uh, that was earlier last year, though. So, I mean, I'm, I'd be down to do it again. Okay. I think it would be fun to prove it. Yeah, I'd love that. I'd love to make it a whole segment. It was a full blood work panel. Yeah. For a thousand dollars, and I saw the results. But obviously, I know no one's gonna be like, "Okay, that was a year ago." I know his blood levels have changed, <laughs> so we'd have to redo it in yeah. any sense. So for sure. maybe it'll come up. And you should be getting your blood done regularly, guys. Yeah. If you're really concerned about your health and well-being, getting your blood done is a must. Yeah, even and if you're natty. Even obviously. if you're natty, exactly, because you may have an underlying health issue mm -hmm. that might be hereditary. You don't even know about, it, right? So I love both ends of the spectrum. I love seeing what natural bipolars are capable of without any use of PDs or extra substance. And I also love seeing the other side of things, which is my side, which is whatever it takes mentality, using the miracle of science today to get the absolute maximum results of the human body. Like, I love seeing that, like, using literally whatever available to you at basically being willing to pay the price, yeah. of potentially dying from it, seeing where that can get you. You know, just to see what the human body is capable of with a combination of science. Like, I think that's really cool too. You think you reached the max? No, I think there was more abuse still left in me had I intended to do so. If I, so I set a goal shortly before making the decision going tier two, like okay, thousand pound deadlift, right? But just to get to where I was at, which is like nine twenty for three, to get that it took a year of prep, a year of extreme, you know, uh, drug abuse, right? Pushing the food, like no tomorrow. See, I'm on two thousand pounds today now. I was on six, seven thousand back. That's not healthy. That's not sustainable. Your body doesn't need that much food, right? So I was like, what is it gonna take to get to a thousand with my frame, with my genetics? It's gonna quite literally be like the choice of being life or death. Like that might have killed me. Yeah. Because I already was borderline like like one foot in the grave, you know? Yes. Um, I've had anxiety all the time, I had acne all over, um, my gut was always inflamed because or was I was taking um, I, I went back to stop taking orals because I was just eating away my stomach lining. Um, so I couldn't have the food properly, which made uh, force feeding even more difficult. So it was all these health complications. I don't talk, talk about often, right? You just got, you got to just see the highlights, yeah. right? But there are generally consequences. There, there is a price to pay for abusing PE, so for getting those results, you know? Um, in the gym, you feel like a superhero. Outside the gym, everything sucks. You got crazy back pumps, can't walk five minutes, you know, without getting a crazy pump, your feet swollen up. I mean, there's all kinds of things I can talk about, like all the negatives of abusing to that level. But I still had that mentality, okay, whatever it takes, I'll pay the price, I wanna see what my body's capable of, you know? But now, like when I made the decision to go into UT, I'm like, a thousand pound deadlift is a cool milestone, but it's just not worth shaving potential years off my life. It's just not lucrative, I'm not making no money from that, I'm not gaining anything, but some bragging right there, oh, I pulled a thousand, you know? Like I've proved myself over and over and over again. I've proved myself to the world, for a decade now, I don't need to be the PR guy anymore. 
right? I can go into other ventures of life that are more lucrative, more rewarding, and more sustainable, right? I have a fiance now, looking to make a baby, like that PR shit, it's fun, right? While, and I have the mentality back when I was 17, okay, I know I can get away with this while I'm young, but come 25, 30, right? I don't want to still be like, okay, blasting PD and do whatever it takes. I want to live a healthy life, yeah. right? So that's what made that decision. You, you motivate a lot of people, man. Me included, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I haven't been following you as far as uh, like on social media, but obviously I've seen over the years, and I mean years of just obviously your work, the PRs you made, the motivational videos, everything, the Machiavelli shit, dude, this is, like I said earlier when I, when I first came into the gym, it's an honor to meet you, and I really mean that, man. You're, you're a legend. I, 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 I gotta give respect and credit where it's due. So, this workout means a lot to me. And not the last, this is just the first of many. It's the first of many, dude. And I'm here in LA to stay, um, and I'm looking forward to what we can accomplish together. And maybe co-star in Hollywood. Man, come on, bro. <laughs> that's even more exciting, you know? That's even more yes, exciting. That's the next goal. Yeah. Yeah, we went from the PRs, I went from bodybuilding, now let's go into the big screen and, and set some milestones there. Absolutely. I think it's a wrap, man. Yeah, let's wrap it here, guys. You already know. If you don't already follow him, link down below, transcend. See if you qualify for TRT. Who knows? Maybe you have low stops level. So if you're using Cialis now, you don't need it. You probably have low tests. You're probably out of whack. See if you qualify, link down below, and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Love you guys.